reporting live from one of the Istanbul airports. About to hop on a flight to Baghdad in an hour. John, my camera guy, he's over at the bar. He just ordered us a couple Long Island iced teas. Terminal teas. We're gonna enter Iraq with a little bit of a buzz because I don't think we're gonna be drinking too much while we're in the country. A lot of people will think I'm crazy for doing this and I don't blame you. I thought my buddy was crazy too when he suggested I pop down to Iraq while in Turkey. But as it turns out, Iraq has been offering tourist visas on arrival to dozens of nationalities since 2021 and are actively trying to promote their tourism. It's actually a surprisingly packed flight. A lot of folks going to Baghdad tonight. When I talked to a fellow YouTuber, Doug Bernard, about his trip there, he only had positive things to say about it. He assured me it was safe and put me in touch with the reputable tour operator he used. Everything I've heard about Iraq my whole life has been related to either Saddam Hussein or the US invasion of the country in 2003. And now that life has returned to some sort of normalcy in many parts of the country, I was eager to experience it firsthand. I mean, I knew YouTubers going to Afghanistan a couple years ago. Nowadays, I don't even think you can legally go. So I got a window with Baghdad and Iraq in general, and I'm gonna take it. Safe landing, can confirm the airport looks like an airport. And we are disembarking, so it's time to go apply for our visa on arrival. How are you doing, Sam? How are you? Doing well. We met up with two people who work for the tour company that we're with. We gave them our passports, so we are passportless. And they said they'll be back in 10 minutes and we'll be sorted. All right, we are through. That was crazy easy. We just gave these two dudes up there 80 bucks each. And then after 20 minutes, we were able to enter the country. Thank you for making that so fast. I thought it would be a longer process. Our tour operator had arranged for us to be picked up at the airport in a nice ass taxi and taken directly to our hotel to check in. We're not in the US anymore, Toto. I tried to go outside to smoke this and they said, no, 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 smoke it in the lobby. They actually, they insisted. I smoked in the lobby. I would actually prefer to be outside, but hey, they said no problem, so lobby owns. It's past 2 a.m. right now. We're gonna try to get like four or five hours of sleep, and then uh, we're heading out for a tour of Baghdad at 9 a.m. We headed up to our room, and I passed out as soon as my head hit the pillow, but didn't get much shut-eye, as apparently Iraqis take the phrase rise and grind literally. That was a solid alarm clock. He goes fucking pedal to the metal with that thing. Early morning drill sessions have followed me from China. Okay, yeah, all right, that's great. I'm gonna go kill myself. To Italy. And now Iraq. The moment you leave the US, someone's drilling a fucking wall. But I wasn't about to let a first world problem ruin my day. So I headed down to the lobby and got ready to explore the streets of Baghdad. Beautiful day. We're heading now to go exchange some money and then we're gonna do a tour of the markets and old Baghdad with our tour guide, Ahmed. Hello. Ahmed, all right, cool. We spent the first 30 minutes just crossing a bunch of streets trying to find a currency exchange that was open. First thing I noticed about the city is there didn't seem to be any crosswalks. But I didn't mind, as a few games of Iraqi Frogger woke me up better than any coffee could. We're on public transit. It's like these uh, mini buses, which circulate all around the city. Is this our stop? Okay. After quite the expedition, I was finally able to exchange some USD for dinar. So there were people like yelling out of the window of their cars. And at first I was a little worried. I was like, are they yelling? get out of the country. Um, but then I realized they're just screaming, how are you? How are you, how are you? They're practicing their English, so that's reassuring. Our first stop on the tour was Liberation Square, 
which was the site of massive political protests back in 2019. Is that why they have still a lot of police here? Yeah, because tomorrow is Friday. Every Friday there is a protest. Why is it that every Friday there is a protest? Because all people are on holiday, on Friday holiday. Uh, like that. The protest in 2019, was it against the current government? Was yeah, it against? No, not the one of the previous government. The protests were against corruption and unemployment and called for the end of the sectarian political system created by the United States and its allies after the 2003 invasion. The young people was coming to this yard. Yes. They, they, they bring their tents, you know. They, stay. they cut off the bridge because the government is on the other side. So over the bridge is where they have the government yeah. buildings? The green zone. Oh, over the bridge is yeah. the green zone, yes. The government at the time, backed by Iranian militias, used live bullets, marksmen, hot water, and tear gas against the protesters, leading to many deaths and injuries. From the bomb, yes, shooting from there. Oh, yeah. From like 600. I'm not trying to dive too deep into politics and tragedy, though. I was here to get a taste for the culture. So we hopped in a tuk-tuk to head to a famous Iraqi breakfast spot. Are you hopping in? Oh, push to start. This place is packed. Uh, sweet? Wow. Yeah, that looks good. It's like fried dough with pistachio sprinkles. Very good. If this was on the menu back in the States, I think I would order it over pancakes. I wouldn't even order this over French toast. After some sweet bread and cream, nothing hits the spot more than your first local hoon. I would like to try a Baghdadi brand. Miami? Is that is that from Iraq? Iraq, yeah. Yeah? Somal? Somal, it's Iraq. It also looks Canadian because it's got the flag. Somal. Yeah, I'll do these. This is a good hoon. It's light. It doesn't pack as big of a punch as Chinese six, but I like that. I could crank like a dozen of these. Now we'd be entering Old Baghdad to check out the city's market district. I've seen a lot of markets in my travels, but the one in Baghdad may have been the most eclectic. This place is incredible. You can buy anything that you can think of in the entire world, even out of ground pools. Uh -huh. There were people selling antiques. Yo, it's the king. Fabrics. Probably a little dangerous to be smoking this in the garment market. Yeah. Squid game memorabilia and currency from the Saddam Hussein era. We get in Baghdad money. One for me, one for my cameraman, one for my PA, and then two could be for you. There were slaughtered animals if you needed food, and a section filled with live animals if you needed a pet. This is wild. Dude, they got puppies, they got ducks, they got pigeons, they got parakeets, they got birds I don't even know the name of. Oh, these dogs are cute though. Although those turned out not to be dogs. Wait, so you were saying that these aren't dogs? No, just this one. So are they dingoes? Wild dogs, coyotes, wolves? Wolves. Wolves. Yeah. Dude, I would buy a wolf. I don't think they allow you to bring wolves back into the US from Iraq. The marketplace was an assault on the senses. It's very chaotic because like each of these stores has a megaphone blasting out the promo of the day. And they're all right next to each other. And if you didn't keep your head on a swivel, there were probably eight different forms of transportation that might run you over. I was definitely in need of a little peace and quiet, so we strolled down to the banks of the Tigris River for a pleasure cruise. The cradle of civilization. 
the Tigris and the Euphrates. So in between these two rivers is where the first human civilization sprung up. And I can't wait to get on a boat. I would love some boat sodas, but I, I don't think those fly here. Oh, this thing's got a Johnson 140 Adidas engine. These things fucking hot. Our captain looked like an Arabian Coach O, which was pretty cool. But to be honest with you, boats aren't as much fun when you can't crush beers on them. Boat drinks. The boys in the band ordered boat oh drinks. God. However, while Baghdad may be lacking in boat drinks, you can find people on the street slanging plenty of other beverages. Mocktails. Like homemade ginger beer. You pour ginger syrup in a 7-Up and you got a ginger ale. Refreshing. Very refreshing. Pomegranate juice. This is a famous type of juice. Yeah, it's famous in all Jordan. And if you can see all the famous people, prime minister, kings, they visit this place. This guy looks like he was on a different type of juice. Yeah. Cafes here also serve up some of the strongest tea and coffee I've had in my life. <sighs> this is a happening cafe. We're gonna Spark get the shop and up. It's a cool atmosphere. Ever since Shabander Cafe opened its doors a century ago, it's been an intellectual hub, attracting writers, poets, politicians, and book lovers. Sadly though, in 2007, disaster struck. So a car bomb went off right here in 2007. Terrorist attack. The bomb destroyed the cafe and killed more than 30 people, including four sons and a grandson of the cafe's owner, Mohammed al Kashali. Iraqis are known for their resiliency though, and Muhammad reopened the cafe in 2009, determined to keep its legacy as an important cultural center alive. Photos on the wall of the people who lost their lives in the explosion are a constant reminder of a tragic past. But the lively atmosphere inside points to a more hopeful future. They got people playing music, smoking shisha, cranking hoons, drinking tea, drinking coffee. I don't think they serve food. And it was time for lunch, so headed to a shish kebab spot down the street. That in there. That's a great meat. So tender. Good. Mm. Good. Very good. 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 Very good. Wow. So far, everyone we had met around the city had been incredibly friendly. Oh, yes. Thank you. And excited to see foreign tourists back in the country. We're looking you. Thank you. However, I felt like the day was such a whirlwind, I didn't get to know anyone too well. Fortunately, though, that night, Ahmed had invited me to Baghdad's Al Medina Stadium to watch Iraq take on UAE in a World Cup qualifier. Seemed like the perfect opportunity to make some new friends. Tune in next week to see what a ball game in Baghdad is like.